Where is Bitcoin headed next? I'm the altcoin analyst, nothing here is financial advice. Let's dive in. Now, the first thing I wanna point out here is we were looking at the Bitcoin chart in kind of a neutral wedge pattern. And it was looking something like that. And so what I wanna point out here is First and foremost, this is more of a neutral pattern, so it's not really specifically or particularly bearish or bullish. However, we did get a deviation up here like that. And so it came back into this range and we are just still compressing. Now, I'm leaning towards it's going to break to the downside simply because when it had the opportunity to break to the upside, it failed. It got rejected. And so, in my mind, I mean, it could very well come out and do this, but it had its opportunity here to break out and it didn't, it failed. And so I think it'll probably come back into this range here and consolidate for a bit. And then ultimately, I tend to think it's going to break down probably after the halving. Now, one indicator that I like to pull up is the RSI divergence indicator. And we had this bearish divergence, divergence flash over here, and we got a little correction. However, the more important level here is the 50 RSI. We've been holding that very nicely. And if we're going to break down below the 50 RSI, if, if you're more of a trader or momentum trader, breaking below the 50 is more bearish. Now, if it can hold the 50 and, and come back up, Again, I think that would be evidence for going potentially higher. However, we seem to be just kind of holding this level here and, and it's looking like the 50 wants to break through. Now, it could just kind of consolidate around here and, and not do much. That's always a, a possibility too. But looking at the 50 RSI is a good indication of what could potentially come in terms of momentum. Now, the other thing I'm seeing here is that the Bitcoin dominance is just compressing higher into this triangle-like pattern. And so this is more of a bullish pattern. And in my mind, it's just going to break out. And that's going to spell trouble for the altcoin market. And if we look at the EPTC chart, it did kind of bounce here. We had our support level drawn out. It did get a nice bounce at this range, at below the range lows over here, kind of a, a deviation like it did over here. And it's kind of come back up to that trend line and it's holding on for dear life. <laughs> so it's always a possibility it could come back down and I will be watching this area here because now that we've touched this area twice, I think it's an area of interest for when the price does come back down. And so it's going to be trouble, I think, if it can definitively break this area. It's looking, looking pretty weak. The other thing notable happening is actually in the stock market. And so if we go up to the S&P here, we're getting some very big inflation data tomorrow. Now, the reason the inflation data is important, if you're not familiar with it, and I'll try and break it down step by step. Now, the stock market generally, and we'll use some inflation uh, into the cryptoverse charts here for, to help with the explanation. When inflation rises, the Fed generally raises interest rates to bring the inflation rate down. That's kind of their only tool they have to bring the inflation rate down. Unfortunately, raising interest rates also generally tends to lead us into a recession. And so we, have had interest rates at five and a half percent for an extended period of time now and the one thing i'll point out about this interest rate hiking cycle it's the most aggressive rate hiking cycle that the fed has done in the past 40 years so we've gone into a recession where the fed hasn't raised interest rates as high or as quickly before now I think that's pretty relevant because if we look at the inflation data, and this is the year over year inflation, we're sitting here at 3.17%.
the Fed has said they want to get it down to 2%. And so as you can see from January of 2024 to February of 2024, it went up. And that's a problem because if inflation is going up, then that means the Fed cannot cut interest rates. And it's likely they're going to leave interest rates high until they're forced to cut them, until we actually go into a recession. So if we go to the CME tool and we look to probabilities, this chart is always changing. So in May, they're likely not going to cut interest rates. And so the inflation data is extremely important. Now, why does this matter? Well, tomorrow we're getting the CPI consumer price index, which is a measure of change over time in the prices paid by urban consumers for a market basket of consumer goods and services. And so the consumer price index for all urban consumers increased 0.4% and rose 3.2% over the last 12 months. If the inflation numbers come in higher than they're expected, there's a chance that the markets could probably be spooked. Now, we'll actually go to the weekly chart here because it'll be a lot easier to look at. If inflation comes in lower than it's, ex it's expected, meaning that the fed raising interest rates is having a positive impact on inflation by lowering inflation there's a good chance that the markets might continue to rally still predicting the three rate cuts this year now how does this affect bitcoin why does this affect bitcoin well if we go into a recession and we'll actually let's overlay bitcoin here if the s p goes into a recession this year on larger macro moves, generally Bitcoin and the S&P are very correlated. We can see by looking at the chart that this large macro downtrend in both the S&P and Bitcoin was pretty significant. And we can see in this large macro uptrend that again, Bitcoin and the S&P were very correlated. Now, I'm under the impression that Bitcoin and the S&P are very correlated on larger macro moves. However, looking at it day to day to day, it could very much be not as correlated as we might expect. But in the larger macro moves, I tend to think they are very correlated. Now again, recently they've both been rallying since kind of the lows of December. And I tend to think that if we go into a recession that might last anywhere from four months to 12 months in that range and i think it'll coincide with a stock market downturn for that amount of time as well and if that happens i tend to think that bitcoin will probably trade along with it now i very much am aware that bitcoin was created out of the financial crisis of 08 and tends to have that narrative of we're going into hyper bitcoinization Bitcoin's going to just kind of deviate from everything and be its own asset class. However, there's no evidence to suggest that. And I tend to think that with the Wall Street Bitcoin spot ETF, I tend to think Bitcoin will probably be more correlated since Wall Street is, is now involved. Every inflation data print is very important right now because the Fed is really basing their actions off of that data coming in. And so this is always going to change. I tend not to take too much weight into the June rate cut. So with May being at 93%, I think it's probably, I'm pretty confident in saying that I don't think the Fed's going to cut in May. And with, with June being at 51% and July also being at 49%, it's too early to tell what the Fed is actually going to do. And that's why these numbers are so important. And so the CPI comes out at 830 tomorrow, no matter what your time zone you're in, there could potentially be a lot of volatility during that time frame because I think the stock market is going to have a reaction based on that data. And I tend to think Bitcoin will as well. If we go back to Bitcoin here, I think that it's important to define a strategy that works for you, knowing how to navigate the markets. Because if you're just in here buying when you think it's going to go up or selling when you think it's going to go down, 
that's not a good strategy. You need to have a list of things laid out. If this happens, if this happens, and so on and so forth, then I do this. That's going to help you navigate any markets a lot better than just blindly buying or blindly selling. Now, we'll jump into more of the charts that I like to look at from into the Cryptoverse. And I think the risk metric is a very, very good indicator because once it gets above 0.9, that generally signals, and it has the past one, two, three times that we're going into an extended bear market in the very near future. And so that's also what I'm going to be watching here because we printed a 0.739 and we've never really had that high of a print before the halving. So it's definitely interesting times. The highest we had was 0.64 and that was before the halving in 2019. And so again, this is the data that I think is going to help give you guys the edge. And... <clears throat> I think he has some free tiers that I would probably recommend just becoming familiar with the one or two charts that you get with the free tier. It's going to help you in the long run. And if we jump back here, the other chart I like to look at is the altcoin season index on a 14 day SMA moving average. Now we have come down from about a price or a value of 73 and we're now sitting at around 44. And so in my opinion, this is indication that no matter what direction Bitcoin is going to go, it's more than likely, I think, going to outperform altcoins at this time. Now, the reason I say that is because every time we've come up to this region up here, and I kind of wish this was interactive so I could draw a trend line, and we've corrected off that level, we've always kind of come back down into the green. Now, in my opinion, that makes me think that Bitcoin is going to outperform altcoins, meaning that if Bitcoin goes up, the altcoins probably aren't going to go up as much right now. Or if Bitcoin corrects, the altcoins are going to correct more. So you're better off in Bitcoin. Now, again, I look at tons of charts and data to come up with my own strategy, but this is just what I'm seeing in the chart. So we'll see if this actually comes back down to the green or not. We can see that actually as of recording this video, Bitcoin has started to kind of put in some green price action, which is interesting to see because right after this green candle over here, we've had this bearish engulfing candle. And so this candle after a bearish engulfing candle is going to be interesting to watch because as of right now, it's have some green, it's, it's had some green price action. Is it going to be a bullish engulfing candle and just completely f <laughs> throw off any sort of analysis being done with the candles over here? Because generally when you have a bearish engulfing, meaning a red candle that takes you all the way down below the previous uh, green wick or green candle, it's generally pretty bearish. And so I think that this next candle is going to be something to watch. Expect volatility tomorrow. I think that's probably the best course of action. Brace for volatility in either direction. And with that being said, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.